to laugh they at this. love that they love the idea because they know it's a mockery of black people it is another way to be racist yeah so openly racist and no one's really calling him on that on trump on that obviously in part because like kamala harris really doesn't want to bring up her own identity yeah brian kilmeade made some controversial comments on fox news which have sparked reactions from various commentators Francesca Fiorentini and Emma Vigeland from The Majority Report discussed and analyzed Kilmeade's statements in detail. In this video, we'll be looking at clips from Fox & Friends, alongside commentary from The Majority Report with Francesca and Emma. I'll also be sharing my thoughts along the way. This is easy, making fun of Brian Kilmeade. I mean, it's, I it's good for you. He's kind of an intellectual. Yeah. Uh, here he is, the professorial Brian Kilmeade talking about black voters black men why do they like trump he says there's not a ton of data to back this up but here he goes this is his political analysis <laughs> i thought eddie griffin said some interesting and this story is on foxnews.com he's relatively an x-rated uh, black but very uh, black comedians very funny black, black, says, black, your black, yeah, black. i know please uh, it says the black community he goes uh he offered a humorous argument that trump has certain credentials the black community likes he's got three baby mamas 43 felony cases in county. Oh boy. He's selling oh high no. top tennis shoes like Michael Jordan, and he got shot like Tupac. Uh, he goes, I'm voting for him. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, I, he goes, I'm going to try. He goes, I wouldn't be surprised if he dropped an album next. <laughs> I mean, That's I, I don't think the codes. I mean, I think he's clearly making a joke. He's, I, I, I don't <laughs> think he's uh, the the community cares much about that. But I do think when they continue, the Democrats have to be very careful. And if you notice, there was a huge surge of saying felon, 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 felon. It's well, I thought the Democratic Party was for felons being able to, to vote and for a second chance. And I think there is there, there's there's this double speak with the Democratic Party that's going to hurt. Them. We don't care about the shoes and all right. that stuff. So we care about the money. Do you know how many felons are in this country out and about 30 million? OK. I, the the idea what? that Kilmeade what? had the gall to read that uh, with a Lawrence. black guy next to him on the set. Lawrence, you'll get a kick out of this. I printed out an article from Fox.com. Does this resonate with you? Eddie Griffin, you know that guy, Lawrence? You're friends with him? That was well, a bad see? point, though, by Lawrence. Uh, what's it, What's his last name? Jones. Lawrence Jones. Jones. Yeah. By Lawrence Jones in the sense, I mean, he's making it about, uh, it's a, it's a right, right wing framing. But the Democrats shouldn't emphasize some of that felon stuff because it's, I mean, and I don't think they've been saying felon, actually. I think Harris has been more saying that, you know, he's going to be appealing in a court or appearing in a courtroom and things like that, because it is true that uh, we have overly incarcerated. Uh, we're the top jailer in the world. We've incarcerated so many people for low level offenses, extremely punitive criminal justice system and feeding into the framing of, you know, felon. Ugh, disgusting isn't helpful, but. Uh, it also isn't having the effect that he's describing of like, oh, they're all going to come up, you know, they're coming over to the Democratic Party, uh, the, to the Republican Party. Just you wait and see. I, do, I mean, OK, here's what I'll say. I kind of disagree about the felon thing. Like, obviously, interesting abolitionist here. Um, big, you know, like I hate all this language. I hate the Carl Soil system. Two million people in and out of it. But of all the things, this just sort of reminds me of like, um, you really shouldn't fat shame Trump because that's like disrespectful. It's like, shut up, shut. He is a disgusting fascist slug. Oh yeah, like he's a convicted just criminal. Just call him a criminal. And of all though, the times, not a felon. Oh sure, sure. I feel like Emma Vigeland might be overanalyzing things a bit here. When people talk about giving felons a second chance. They're usually referring to individuals who have been imprisoned for minor offenses, like drug charges. Not someone with a long history of criminal behavior like Donald Trump. There's a big difference between those two situations. I'm like, of all the times to like soft pedal on the crime narrative, it is very funny and fitting that Kamala Harris is like a prosecutor, a yes. black woman, all of the Bach, all of the, the Venn diagram of everything of Trump's kryptonite, really. And that's just like so poetic it's beautiful so i'm a little bit like if anything go softer on immigration go softer on gaza like you know yeah like, call, i don't i don't well I'm that's where she shined like was the debate where she gets to be a prosecutor to this obvious crook and like i i i like crook and criminal more than felon but i mean we're, we're yeah parsing that's things. a good point yeah i, I mean, mean what i love about this clip though let's just be real that like yes. ainsley ainsley is like they're all just like as when as soon as lawrence starts talking it makes a good point 
she's just like, <laughs> could you just agree and laugh and let's move on? <laughs> you yeah. blacks are like that. Can we, <laughs> just, okay, okay, can we stop talking getting... about this, please? You were here to <laughs> yes and, uh, not to contradict us. Also, I don't know if you guys noticed that Brian killed me at one point when he's describing Eddie Griffin, the source material. He's like, he's a black but very uh, black black comedian. He was trying. He almost said black but very funny. I noticed that too. The way Brian Kilmeade made that comment was cringeworthy, especially when he felt the need to add in the comedian part. It's surprising how Kilmeade manages to keep his job with comments like these. It sometimes feels like he might be on TV to make viewers feel smarter by comparison. It's a bit baffling, to be honest. Hey, He's so uh, funny. funny I mean... Doesn't make you feel bad, you know? I know, right. Like, if you're watching this at the, uh, before you're teeing off at the golf course, uh, 82-year-old man watching this uh, watching this uh, show, please, he's one of the good ones. Just yes. like our friend over there who was supposed to not contradict me, God damn it! Yeah, just laugh. Just laugh. Be there to laugh they at this. They love that. They love the idea because they know it's a mockery of black people. It is another way to be racist. Yeah. So openly racist, and no one's really calling him on that, on Trump on that. Obviously, in part because like Kamala Harris really doesn't want to bring up her own identity. Yeah. Um, and not, I mean, again, for the golf golfers watching on their break. But uh, you could, you could explain how disrespectful this is. This line of, uh, you know, sneakers and felonies is felonies. But the flip side on the tactics here is like Hillary made it all about herself in 2016. And I'm with her. I, you know, I'm this change candidate. It's her turn. Yeah. Like, it's everyone knows she's a woman. You, people can see. Like, she doesn't need to explain the situation, Kamala, Kamala Harris is. And you, you, the other thing that's kryptonite for Trump is also that Kamala's hot. That's the other thing that's I kryptonite know. for Trump. No, you him. see the Vogue, the Vogue cover? I Trump's, didn't see Trump's it. Be like, oh my God. She, she is. Do not show this to me. She, she's, a, <laughs> she's a hot lady. And I think that also <laughs> sends him into a bit of a, a tizzy. Yeah. A few weeks ago, he was on the radio interview and he was like, I saw her on the cover of this magazine and she looked ma unbelievable. I, oh my God. What were we talking about again? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what she were we, what like was the Melania. question? <laughs> yes. He said he looked he, like his, he looked Slovenian, like, oh, right. his Slovenian wife. <laughs> his Slovenian wife <laughs> resembled a, a black and South Asian woman. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, that's how hot I. I thought she was i could have sworn <laughs> oh that's so funny i mean at um, least it wasn't the ivanka switch because that's how you know you're, you're done for as soon as he oh. compares you to ivanka right i love that line from francesca fiorentini as soon as someone compares you to candace owens it says a lot and francesca was spot on with her observation fox news often uses black commentators in a way that allows them to push certain narratives while avoiding accusations of racism by having a black commentator agree with them, they feel shielded from criticism, which is a tactic Fox News has used for years. Brian Kilmeade's comments were just another example of this, and Fox and Friends continues to be one of the most problematic shows on TV. Do you agree with Francesca Fiorentini and Emma Vigeland about the subtle racism in that segment? Also, what do you think about the idea that Kamala Harris might be Donald Trump's kryptonite because she's a strong woman? Trump has a history of struggling with powerful women. So if Harris were to defeat him, it would be an ironic twist, especially considering his motivation to run for president was sparked by feeling insulted by Barack Obama. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you agree with Francesca, Emma, or the idea that Fox News uses black hosts to get away with certain narratives? Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps the channel grow and allows me to bring you more content like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.